Very much. We're, we're going now to we're turn to Sri Lanka. So, President Vikram and I, I, you are in a in a somewhat special situation. We move now to a middle-income country. Um, the coordination challenges are maybe greater in the sense that you are not subject to the common framework. We just heard that this was an important instrument in the case of Chad. Uh, the official creditor committee has been formed with Paris Club and non-Paris Club members. I understand that India's decision to participate uh, and co-chair this creditors uh, gathering is a, is a major milestone. So what is your view about the restructuring process and what would you consider to be the main bottlenecks? We've already heard from the president of Chad uh, that we need to reduce bureaucracy. I'm sure that we all agree on that. Simplification is some things the, sometimes the most complex uh, thing to achieve. Uh, but I, we're very interested to hear your experience in this regard. When Sri Lanka was declared bankrupt as MIC, we were not eligible under the common framework for debt restructuring. We had limited access to concessionary financing. And there was a complete loss of external financing. Therefore, Sri Lanka's response was to take ownership of this program both for debt restructuring for, uh, as well as the economic restructuring needed for growth. Then we negotiated our conditionalities with the IMF and the creditors. So it's like we were working on a menu. The argument of which should get, what are the items that should get on and what are the items that could be taken off. I think we had agreement actually to about 90% of the items. So we, 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 we own it as much as the IMF is. Of course, we had uh, two exceptional situations. One is that India came to our help, and that was nearly 4 billion US dollars available when fund, no other source of funding was available. Secondly, through the World Bank and the ADB, we went through the process of reverse graduation. So the gain became entitled to concessionary uh, funding. But from the time we declared ourselves bankrupt, there was a delay on bureaucracy on both sides. We delayed, 
and if we had funding by May, the upheavals of July could have been avoided. But anyway, we had the upheavals of July. We went in immediately as it settled down. By September, we had a staff level agreement, but it took us another six months for agreement to come before we got any monetary assistance. So we, we undertook significant economic reform that imposed pain on the population, but without any predictability. Now, this, this, this is the problem we have. And I would say, given the increasing vulnerabilities facing middle-income nations, MIC's access to concessional financing must be viewed from a broader perspective, which should be automatic and timely under an agreed criteria, if you fulfill the criteria. Secondly, I mean, I agree, President Achar defined you, we could have done it much faster. I would have told Maldives to invade our country. At least you could have got the money much faster. But uh, we, we followed it up. We did the debt. The staff level agreement came last uh, September. By November, we had the climate uh, prosperity plan, which we announced at COP27. Now, it's been followed up by Sri Lanka's growth agenda for a highly competitive green economy. So our financial needs both official and private, has virtually quadrupled. So that, that's the problem others also have to face. Then I would uh, say, following the conclusion of negotiation the IMF and the successful approval of the EFF, we have had no roadmap to follow regarding the next phase of debt restructuring. So uh, before we can get the next tranche from the IMF. So it, it's a question of us now mapping the road out. But I, I would like to certainly point out a few of the experiences. The data-led approach was the key to our success. It was our program, not an IMF program. Secondly, we found sponsor for us among the official creditor community. That helps. Thirdly, you have to be very pragmatic when you are implementing this. I am not sure that a binding framework like the common framework would have rendered the process uh, quicker or more efficient. The approach for a middle-income country would be to move. If you have a common framework, what happens is we move as fast as, as the slowest creditor. So we get tied down. So that's why we're not in favor of a, a common framework. We were able to create traction with the most committed creditors, raising the general quality and efficiency of the process. Because we are still Frustrated by the lack of process, the cost for us, economic and social, has been very high. Now, as far as the creditors, our creditors include the Paris Club and the non-Paris Club members, of which India and Hungary, uh, India and China are two of our main creditors, Japan from the uh, Paris Club. So we, we've attempted and we've uh, to establish an ad hoc platform for the official creditors, including the Paris Club members and others. India, Hungary, others came on to, this, to participate in the ad hoc platform. China participated as observers. We shared the information with all parties on an open transaction, transparent process. Then I must thank IMF with the intervention of the IMF and Sri Lanka's coordination we, we are dealing with both groups. So what else helped us was that Sri Lanka had ongoing negotiations with Japan, India, and China separately regarding further trade inter integration and also some of the development programs for the future. This assisted our process. But uh, as far as my experience is, we, we need, uh, we have to have some improvement for the interaction between the committee and the debtors. Because the debt restructuring process is a negotiation, and it should, by a sense, be interactive. Looking at dealing with Paris Club and non-Paris Club, we need a new approach. <clears throat> because this is basically a geopolitical issue. The mistrust between US and China and the growing tension, it has to be addressed by all, not merely by Sri Lanka or the country concerned. If you do not resolve it, I think we will still, in Asia and Africa, we will get caught into another situation, not our 
making. So these would be the major issues that we have addressed. And uh, restructuring is needed. Mm. I agree with it. It has to move fast. Otherwise, most of the countries, whether uh, LIC or MIC, will not have uh, much hope. And there will be more instability, political and economic instability. And uh, without creating a separate process, under this round table, we should deal with the issues of the uh, middle-income countries because most are under stress. It's better to deal with them under stress than when they are bankrupt. So that process has to evolve. Thank you. Thank you.